clinical trials. Clinical trials are studies in which people volunteer to test new drugs, diagnostic tests, or devices. Doctors use clinical trials to learn whether a new treatment works and is safe for people. These kinds of studies are needed to develop new treatments for serious diseases like cancer. Clinical trials are vital in studying all aspects of medicine. New treatments, drugs, and medical devices must go through clinical trials before being approved by the FDA. Clinical trials show us what works and what doesn't in medicine and healthcare. They are the best way to learn what works best in treating diseases. Clinical trials are designed to answer two important questions. One, does the new treatment work in humans? If it does, doctors are also looking at how well it works. Is it better than what's now being used to treat a certain disease? If it's not better, is it at least as good while perhaps causing fewer side effects? Or does it work in some people who aren't helped by current treatments? Two, is the new treatment safe? No treatment or procedure, even one already in common use, is entirely without risk. But do the benefits of the new treatment outweigh the possible risks? Answering these questions while exposing as few people as possible to an unknown treatment often requires several different tests. They're usually grouped into phases. Clinical trials in each phase are designed to answer certain questions while trying to make sure the people taking part are kept as safe as possible. Every new treatment is tested in three or more phases of clinical trials before being considered reasonably safe and effective for the pharmacy. The Drug Discovery Timeline Through FDA Approval On average, a new drug has to be studied for at least six and a half years before clinical trials can begin. This period of time is when drug development and preclinical testing take place. The drug developer moves from target to hit to lead to candidate compound during this time, as discussed in Unit 6. But the major holdup in making new drugs available is how long it takes to complete clinical trials themselves. It takes an average of about seven years from the time a drug enters clinical trials until it's approved. To be sure it's safe and effective, researchers look at each new treatment in several different studies. Only certain people are eligible to take part in each phase of the clinical trial, and the amount of time required to determine whether the drug works is variable. It takes months, if not years, to see if a cancer treatment, for example, works in any one person. And figuring out if a drug really improves disease outcomes can take a very long time. The biggest barrier to completing clinical trials is not enough people take part in them. Fewer than 5% of adults, less than 1 in 20 with cancer, for example, will take part in clinical trials. But clinical trials are much more commonly used to treat children with cancer. In fact, 60% of children with cancer under the age of 15 participate in clinical trials. This is one reason that survival rates for childhood cancer have increased so dramatically in the past few decades. The main reason people give for not taking part in a clinical trial is that they didn't know the studies were an option for them. But there are many other reasons. Some people want to take part but don't meet the requirements. Some are uncomfortable with the idea of being a volunteer in a study. Others worry that they won't be treated fairly or could be harmed by an unproven treatment. Before a clinical trial can be done, it must be decided whether it's ethical to ask patients to volunteer for the experimental treatment. Has the study been designed as much as possible to make sure the people in it will be safe? Will the volunteers get a treatment that's at least as good and maybe even better than what they would get if they didn't volunteer for the study? Scientific panels are set up to review and approve all clinical trials to make sure questions like these are answered before the researchers are allowed to sign up patients. Clinical trials are done only after preclinical studies suggest that the proposed treatment is likely to be safe and will work in people. Preclinical studies include 1. Cell culture studies. These are often the first tests done on a new treatment. To see if it might work, researchers look for effects of the new treatment on cancer cells, for example, that are grown in a lab dish or a test tube. These studies may be done on human cancer cells or animal cancer cells. Two, animal studies. 
Treatments that look promising in cell studies are tested next on cancers in live animals. This gives researchers an idea of how safe the new treatment is in a living creature. It is important to note that testing on animals is not a requirement for drug approval, but if a compound is not tested in animals, it is extremely difficult to meet the safety requirements for entry to clinical trials. Preclinical studies give a lot of useful information, but they don't give all the answers that are needed. After all, humans and mice can be very different in the way they absorb, process, and get rid of substances. The treatment that works against cancer in a mouse may or may not work in people, and there could be side effects and other problems that didn't show up when the treatment was used in mice. If the preclinical studies are completed and the treatment still seems promising, the FDA must give permission to test it in humans. The Investigational New Drug, IND, application. Before a clinical trial can be started, the research must be approved. An Investigational New Drug, or IND, application must be filed with the FDA when researchers want to study a drug in humans. The IND application must contain certain information, as described below. The FDA reviews this information before human clinical trials start. Here's some of the information required on an IND request. 1. Preclinical studies. Results from studies, including those on animals, allow the FDA to decide whether the product is reasonably safe for testing in humans. This part may also include any experience with the drug in humans, if the drug had been used or studied in another country, for example. 2. Manufacturing information. This explains how the drug is made, who makes it, what's in it, how stable it is, and more about the physical qualities of the drug. The FDA uses this information to decide whether the company can make batches of the drug that will always be exactly the same. 3. Clinical protocols and investigator information. Detailed outlines for the planned clinical studies, called study protocols, are looked at to see if the study might expose subjects to unnecessary risks. Information on the clinical investigators who will supervise the study is reviewed to find out if they're qualified to run clinical trials. Finally, the research sponsor must commit to getting informed consent from the research subjects, having the study reviewed by an Institutional Review Board, IRB, and following all the rules required for studying investigational new drugs. Facts about clinical trials. Taking part in any clinical trial is voluntary. Patients always have the right to choose whether they will take part in a clinical trial for which they are eligible. The level of care they get should not be affected by their decision. They also have the right to leave a clinical trial at any time for any reason. They should know how quitting the study might affect their health and what other treatment options they have. They should also tell the research group that they're quitting and why. The clinical trials team may ask that the patient agree to continue to be watched for a certain length of time to look for any long-term effects of the treatment. Not all clinical trials study treatments. Many clinical trials look at new ways to detect, diagnose, and learn the extent of disease. Some even look at ways to prevent diseases from happening in the first place. Researchers still use human volunteers to test these methods, and the same general rules apply. Clinical trials are not all drug trials. Many clinical trials test other forms of treatment, such as new surgery or radiation therapy techniques, and even complementary or alternative medicines or techniques. Clinical trials are used to study approved drugs, too. Even after a drug has been approved for use against a disease, doctors sometimes find it works better when given a certain way or when combined with other treatments. It may even work on a different disease. Clinical trials are needed to study these possibilities, too. Clinical trials and use of placebos. A placebo is a sham pill, inactive ingredient, or fake treatment used in some types of clinical trials to help make sure results are unbiased. A placebo pill is sometimes called a sugar pill. Over the years, doctors have found that some people begin to feel better even if they just think they're being treated. Although this effect tends to be brief and not really affect the disease, it can make a new treatment seem to help. Sometimes people who know they're getting a placebo don't report all the health problems that come up while those on the treatment do. This can make the treatment look like it has worse side effects than it does. 
a placebo control group keeps people from knowing if they're getting the treatment being studied and makes the results more likely to be valid. Placebos are rarely used alone in disease research unless no known effective treatment exists. It is not ethical to have someone take a placebo if there's a treatment available that works. When cancer clinical trials compare treatments, they compare the new treatment against the current standard proven treatment. At times, a study may be designed so that patients don't know which one they're getting, but they know they're getting treatment that at the very least meets the current standard of care. In some clinical trials, the doctors want to learn if adding a new drug to the standard therapy makes it work better. In these studies, some patients get the standard drug or drugs, and the new one being tested, while other patients get the standard drug or drugs and a placebo. But none of the patients would get only a placebo. Everyone gets standard treatment if there's a standard treatment available. Who pays for and runs clinical trials? The U.S. government provides most of the funding for clinical trials. For cancer treatments, for example, the National Cancer Institute, NCI, sponsors, or pays for, a good portion of the thousands of cancer clinical trials going on in the U.S. at any given time. The NCI is a part of the National Institutes of Health, NIH, which is funded by U.S. tax dollars. These studies are often run through the NCI's National Clinical Trials Network, NCTN, which are networks of doctors and institutions across the country that specialize in a certain aspect of cancer. NCI cancer centers also conduct research at their facilities across the United States. Government agencies other than NCI, including parts of the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Defense, often sponsor cancer clinical trials. And there are doctors, academic medical centers, foundations, volunteer groups, and other nonprofit organizations that sponsor clinical trials too. The other main sponsors of clinical trials are pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies, which must prove their medicines or devices are safe and effective before they can be marketed. Researchers conduct clinical trials in many different settings. Major hospitals are often the focal points of clinical trial research. Because they will have the most advanced facilities and highly trained staff, they can conduct all phases of clinical trials. Community hospitals across the country also take place in clinical trials, although these are usually phase two or three studies. Doctors in private practice can also be involved in clinical trials, either as members of cooperative groups or by being actively involved in privately sponsored research. The phases of clinical trials. Clinical trials are usually conducted in phases that build on one another. Each phase is designed to answer certain questions. Knowing the phase of the clinical trial is important because it can give you some idea about how much is known about the treatment being studied. There are pros and cons to taking part in each phase of a clinical trial. Phase zero clinical trials, exploring if and how a new drug may work. Even though phase zero studies are done in humans who have the disease of interest, this type of study isn't like the other phases of clinical trials. The purpose of this phase is to help speed up and streamline the drug approval process. Phase zero studies are exploratory studies that often use only a few small doses of a new drug in a few patients. They might test whether the drug reaches the tissues, how the drug acts in the human body, and how diseased cells in the human body respond to the drug. Patients in these studies might need extra tests such as biopsies, scans, and blood samples as part of the study process. The biggest difference between phase zero and the later phases of clinical trials is that there's almost no chance the volunteer will benefit by taking part in the phase zero trial. The benefit will be for other people in the future. Because drug doses are low, there's also less risk to the patient in phase zero studies compared to phase one studies. Phase zero studies help researchers find out whether the drugs do what they're expected to do. If there are problems with the way the drug is absorbed or acts in the body, this should become clear very quickly in a phase zero clinical trial. This process may help avoid the delay and expense of finding out years later in phase two or even phase three clinical trials that the drug doesn't act as expected to based on lab studies. Phase zero studies aren't widely used and there are some drugs for which they wouldn't be helpful. Phase zero studies are very small, often with fewer than 15 patients, 
and the drug is given only for a short time. They're not a required part of testing a new drug. Phase 1 clinical trials. Is the treatment safe? Phase 1 studies of a new drug are usually the first that involve people. The main reason for doing phase 1 studies is to find out the highest dose of the new treatment that can be given safely without serious side effects. Although the treatment has been tested in lab and animal studies, the side effects in people can't always be predicted. These studies also help to decide on the best way to give the new treatment. Volunteers involved in this phase of testing are generally healthy and young. Rarely, patients with the disease are included. Each year, thousands of individuals in the United States enroll in Phase 1 drug trials as healthy volunteers to earn money. Payments for participation range from a few hundred to a few thousand dollars. Some individuals have enrolled in as many as 80 Phase 1 studies. Professional research participants have developed their own social networks, web pages, associations, and publications, which they use to learn about new studies, share information and experiences, and understand the ethical, regulatory, and scientific aspects of clinical research. Some individuals pursue research participation as a full-time job and travel across the country enrolling in studies. A significant risk of participating in a Phase I drug trial is the possibility of a dangerous interaction between an investigational agent and another medication the participant is currently taking or has recently taken. The risk is especially great in Phase I studies designed to induce toxicity to determine the maximum tolerable dose. Also, recent participation in another study can skew safety data. Most investigators minimize risk and reduce bias by excluding volunteers from Phase I drug studies who have recently participated in another Phase I trial. In the United States, the standard interval is 30 days. Although most drugs are eliminated from the body sooner than this, the 30-day interval is a standard safety measure because some individuals may metabolize or eliminate drugs more slowly than others. Ideally, the protocol should specify an appropriate waiting period based on the half-life of the test agent, because in some cases the interval may need to be longer than 30 days. Key points of the Phase 1 clinical trial are 1. The first few people in the study often get a very low dose of the treatment and are watched very closely. If there are only minor side effects, the next few participants may get a higher dose. This process continues until doctors find a dose that's most likely to work while having an acceptable level of side effects. Two, the focus in phase one is looking at what the drug does to the body and what the body does with the drug. Three, safety is the main concern at this point. Doctors keep a close eye on people and watch for any serious side effects. Because of the small numbers of people in phase one studies, rare side effects may not be seen until later. Four, placebo, sham, or inactive treatments are not part of phase one trials. Five, these studies usually include a small number of people, typically up to a few dozen. Six, these studies are usually done in major hospitals. And seven, these studies are not designed to find out if the new treatment works against the disease. Overall, phase one trials are the ones with the most potential risk, but phase one studies do help some patients. For those with life-threatening diseases, weighing the potential risks and benefits carefully is key. Phase two clinical trials. Does the treatment work? If a new treatment is found to be reasonably safe in phase one clinical trials, it can then be tested in a phase two clinical trial to find out if it works in patients with the disease or condition of interest. Patients involved in this phase of testing are often quite ill with advanced disease. The type of benefit or response the doctors look for depends on the goal of the treatment. In some studies, the benefit may be an improved quality of life. Many studies look to see if people getting the new treatment live longer than they would have been expected to without the treatment. The key points of phase two clinical trials are usually a group of 25 to 100 patients with the same type of disease get the new treatment in a phase two clinical study. They're treated using the dose and method found to be the safest and most effective in phase one studies. In a phase two clinical trial, all the volunteers usually get the same dose. 
but some phase two trials randomly assign participants to different treatment groups, much like what's done in phase three trials. These groups may get different doses or get the treatment in different ways to see which provides the best balance of safety and effectiveness. There is no placebo, sham, or inactive treatment used. Phase two studies are often done at major hospitals, but may also be done in community hospitals or even doctor's offices. Larger numbers of patients get the treatment in phase two studies, so there's a better chance that less common side effects may be seen. If enough patients benefit from the treatment and the side effects aren't too bad, the treatment is allowed to go on to the phase three clinical trial. Along with watching for responses, the research team keeps looking for any side effects. Phase three clinical trials. Is it better than what's already available? Treatments that have been shown to work in phase two studies usually must succeed in one more phase of testing before they're approved for general use. Phase three clinical trials compare the safety and effectiveness of the new treatment against the current standard treatment. Because doctors do not yet know which treatment is better, study participants are often picked at random, called randomized, to either get the standard treatment or the new treatment. When possible, neither the doctor nor the patient knows which of the treatments the patient is getting. This type of study is called a double-blind study. Key points of phase three clinical trials are, one, most phase three clinical trials have a large number of patients, at least several hundred. Two, these studies are often done in many places across the country or even around the world at the same time. Three, phase three clinical trials are more likely to be offered by community-based doctor's offices. Four, these studies tend to last longer than phases one and two. Five, placebos may be used in some phase three studies, but they're never used alone if there's a treatment available that works. As with other studies, Patients in phase three clinical trials are watched closely for side effects and treatment is stopped if they're too bad. Submission for FDA approval, the new drug application, NDA. In the United States, when phase three clinical trials or sometimes phase two studies show a new drug is more effective and or safer than the current standard treatment, a new drug application, NDA, is submitted to the FDA for approval. The FDA then reviews the results from the clinical trial and other relevant information. Based on the review, the FDA decides whether to approve the treatment for use in patients with the type of illness the drug was tested on. If approved, the new treatment often becomes a standard of care, and newer drugs must often be treated against it before being approved. If the FDA feels that more evidence is needed to show that the new treatment's benefits outweigh its risks, it may ask for more information or even require that more studies be done. The phase four clinical trial. What else do we need to know? Drugs approved by the FDA are often watched over a long period of time in phase four studies. During this time, the drug is being prescribed by doctors and is available in the pharmacy. Even after testing a new medicine on thousands of people, the full effects of the treatment may not be known. Some questions may still need to be answered. For example, a drug may get FDA approval because it was shown to reduce the risk of cancer coming back after treatment. But does this mean that those who get it are more likely to live longer? Are there rare side effects that haven't been seen yet or side effects that only show up after a person has taken the drug for a long time? These types of questions may take many more years to answer and are often addressed in phase four clinical trials. The key points of phase four clinical trials are, one, phase four studies look at drugs that have already been approved by the FDA. The drugs are available for doctors to prescribe for patients, but phase four studies might still be needed to answer important questions. Two, these studies may involve thousands of people. Three, this is typically the safest type of clinical trial because the treatment has already been studied a lot and might have already been used in many people. Phase four studies look for safety over time. Four, these studies may also look at other aspects of the treatment, such as quality of life or cost effectiveness. You can get the drugs used in phase four clinical trials without enrolling in a study, and the care you would get in a phase four study is very much like the care you would expect if you were to get the treatment outside of a clinical trial. 
but in phase four studies, you're helping researchers learn more about the treatment and doing a service to future patients. How are clinical trial participants protected? Several levels of safeguards are in place to help protect the people who take part in clinical trials. There are still risks involved with any study, but these safeguards try to reduce the risks as much as possible. Three basic principles, as outlined in the Belmont Report from the late 1970s, provide the basis for research involving humans. 1. Respect for persons. Recognizing that all people should be respected and have the right to choose what treatments they receive. 2. Beneficence. Protecting people from harm by maximizing benefits and minimizing risks. 3. Justice. Trying to ensure that all people share the benefits and burdens of research equally. These principles are upheld by individuals and groups at the sites conducting research, and also by government agencies charged with overseeing clinical trials. Centers conducting clinical trials have committees that review all potential and ongoing clinical trials to protect the people in the studies. These reviews are required for all federally funded clinical trials, but even privately sponsored studies must be reviewed. The learning goals for clinical trials are one, draw a timeline from drug discovery through FDA approval of the drug, including the number of drugs considered at each stage. Two, report the approximate number of patients involved in each phase of a clinical trial. Three, compare the goals of each phase of a clinical trial. And four, describe the protections in place for patients involved in clinical trials.